a show of hands out of curiosity, how many people use the 84, 85 Shepherd class regularly? Okay, great. Um, so as you well know, it's, it's very packed, it's subject to traffic delays. We're carrying over 27,000 drivers <coughs> every day, and this is a, a common scene that's really not what we want to be delivering for transit riders in Scarborough, which is a bus stuck in this traffic. Um, the importance of transit to cities is a big picture. We really want to be increasing the city's competitiveness. Um, the Board of Trade did a study, congestion is crippling our region, it's costing us and economic efficiency, approximately $6 billion every year. And transit can generate, support employment, provide accessibility to jobs, to school. For many of you who raised your hands or are using the Shepherd bus, you know how difficult it can be, particularly during rush hours, if you're going all the way to Don Mill Station to get there. Um, reducing congestion and, of course, reducing pollution. What is the funding commitment? So the provincial government has committed publicly $8.4 billion, including in what the Councillor Joe referred to, the Memorandum of Understanding. So they have signed to commit $8.4 billion overall to Transit in Toronto. The agency that leads that funding is, is Metrolinx. That's the province's transit agency that represent both responsible for Toronto as well as the GTA and Hamilton regions. So Metrolinx is, Metrolinx will make the final decision in terms of the scope and the budget and schedule for the entire plan. So ultimately, it's a, for the province makes the final decision. The TTC is working as Metrolinx's agent uh, in terms of delivering these projects, so in terms of project management and the design and engineering. That doesn't mean it's just TTC staff. There are, um, there are consulting engineers from around the world right now who worked on both subway and light rail um, throughout Europe and the United States. Um, the chief project manager for the the Crosstown project on Eglinton has worked for over 40 years in transit in both the UK and on the New York uh, New York subway. Miller? Can you talk to you more about the coordinates? Because I don't know a lot about it. Okay, I'm, I'm not going to stop the presentation and answer questions, but yeah, briefly, um, I can uh, tell you that they're responsible for coordinating uh, not just transit in Toronto, but GO Transit expansion, um, and not just transit, but it's transportation, so it's expansions to, uh, to highways across the region. And if you check metrolinks.ca, um, it'll, list, it'll list all of their projects. Um, a lot of people have asked about a future connection to the airport um, as part of the Eglinton project. Metrolinks is focused right now for connecting to the airport is actually from, from Union Station along but the road. But the time is here. Excuse me. We'll get to Christian later. Let the TTC finish up with the No problem. had a meeting on February 8th, and um, this is all pending a metro decision. So this is pending the city council meeting coming up on the 21st, as well as the final decision from the province. So what did council talk on, on February 8th? So first off is the, the Eglinton, uh, the Eglinton Crosstown LRT. This is all the way from Black Creek in the west. We're actually already starting to, uh, to dig a giant trench in the ground to deliver the teleporting machines. So it's Black Creek, and then it goes underground in this central section. Um, even if you wanted to build a surface, it would make no sense. It's simply too narrow. But it's underground in the central section from roughly Black Creek, Keel Street, uh, to Laird Drive, so almost to Don Mills. And then, um, and then it would be a surface, basically a, a high, high speed surface in the center of the street, and it's dedicated lane out, uh, out to Kennedy Station. It's also a complete replacement and refurbishment of the Scarborough RT. I imagine there are a lot of folks here who ride the RT. Um, one of the common misconceptions is that the L RT is the same technology as LRT. It is not. It's run by a linear induction motor, and as you well know, when it snows, it's quite susceptible to that. And regardless of what decision happens, um, this will be fully replaced, and will, the capacity of the RT will be significantly expanded with the new technology. Um, the other plan is for the, the Finch West LRT. Um, this very light dotted line that you can just see is a future extension of the, of the subway from down to the up to York University and eventually all the way up into Vaughan. And the Finch West LRT initially in the planning was going to run from Young Street. Um, what council actually voted for on the 8th was not, not to have it here but just from the future extension of the, uh, 
future expansion of the subway on Finch. This is Keel Street. And if any of you have been out over that way, you'll see a lot of construction going on right now. Uh, also at Upstream University. And this goes out, this would go out to Humber College. But of course, none of this is final until the council meeting and the province says it's final. So just a, uh, a close up um, of the items in Crosstown. Of course, still pending approval, including on the final uh, station. So underground in the central section, as mentioned before, from the deal to Lair. That's always been planned to be underground. You simply couldn't fit it at surface, even if you wanted to. And what has changed, the mayor's memorandum of understanding with the province was to build the entire Edmonton project underground uh, from Keele all the way to Kennedy. So the key change that the media has been talking about regularly, and what Councilor Cho mentioned, is that this would be a surface in its own length. This is, of course, still subject to plus two meetings. So 10 kilometers underground, nine and grade, and then the complete refurbishment and conversion of the SRT. Which brings us to the transit options for Scarborough. Up here is the existing Scarborough <coughs> subway, Young Street to, uh, to Don Mills. What you see in, uh, in purple would be what the mayor has been talking frequently about in Dr. Chong's uh, report on raising funds. Uh, people coming to want it. And I'll show a close up of this as well. Um, it's a uh, approximately eight longer subway extension um, that we get from Don Mill uh, to uh, right to right to the center. Extremely fast, subways have a higher capacity, to carry more riders uh, than LRT. I'll get into a comparison later on. Um, this is the subway proposal. The alignment of the proposed Shepherd LRT is quite different than the, than the subway. The LRT is the green dotted line here. So we start at Don Mills. It would go underneath Highway 404 and come above ground roughly at consumers. So there would be, um, regardless of what technology is chosen, um, it will certainly be underground underneath Highway 404 and pop up at both consumers. And then it will pop up and travel in its own dedicated lane to board the sun. This tiny little graphic you see right here is uh, Collinland's Road. And the new maintenance and storage facility would be needed to store those vehicles. So the vehicles would go along and go to there. Um, and of course, here you have the Crosstown, the existing Lord Danforth line up to Kennedy Station, and the existing RT. So really what we've been talking about and what happens on Shepard in this big discussion and debate for March 21st um, is, is Shepard. The subway here, or the, or the LRT. So just a, a close-up of, um, of the LRT, the cost projected at a billion dollars. I was talking about before would be underground, regardless of the technology, this is going to be underground um, from the existing stops of Don Mills, pop up at consumers. It's have approximately 25 stops um, to, uh, to morning sides. It's one of the other key differences between subway and LRT. Subway, of course, you're getting much faster service. LRT, you're having more stops and a little bit better local accessibility, so it's really a, a trade-off between the speed um, and access. Um, either way, you would likely be replacing all of the, all of the buses. So if you Potentially, if you had a subway, you could still run some local service. With an LRT, the stop spacing is closer, so you can the Which brings us to a close up of the, of the uh, Shepherd subway extension from Don Mill to Shepherd Center. So, in purple, we have the existing subway, the ADU is very much in Don Mills. The ground line here is showing the proposed extension uh, to the Starbucks in the center, so you have stops at consumers, at the park. Ordered as uh, Kennedy here called Kennedy North, and an additional stop where the go to the station. Any folks by chance um, driven over taking transit over to Agent Court recently? Yes. Yes, so you've seen the massive grade separation project that's underway. Doesn't matter what, what happens to Shepherd, that's going forward, so you're all well aware of how long it can take in the traffic for the go trains to get through. It's very frustrating. Um, so, one uh, very positive development that's already gone underway. Uh, cars will be able to travel under that um, under that goal line, and the go trains will be much more reliable, fast service to go above. And it's also it's been on the books for many, many years. And I'm happy to say that progress is certainly moving ahead um, on that project. But the subway would have another stop in progress, and all the way down to the uh, all the way down to the Scarborough. So in terms of the uh, of the status. Um, as many of you may be aware, the, the LRT, um, it underwent um, consultation.
consultation, and it was approved by the Ontario Ministry of the Environment. That doesn't mean it's going to get built. It means that it's still a council and a provincial decision, but the, the actual planning work is completed. That was completed in 2009 to get it as far as Morningside. The Shepherd subway extension uh, to the east would require uh, an environmental assessment. So back way back when there was a previous environmental assessment that would have to be reviewed and there would be plans would be for a new environmental assessment to get environmental approvals to get the subway uh, to So there is a, a panel that you've probably been, been reading about in the media, various differing opinions uh, um, about the panel. They will be reporting at this meeting March 21, <coughs> coming up very soon. And they will advise council on, uh, on what they believe should be delivered um, in terms of transit for, for the Shepherd Corridor, uh, in terms of moving the greatest number of people with the funds that are allocated. Uh, Dr. Chong's report has looked at different creative ways of financing, and I'm sure that we'll have that discussion on, on the 21st. Um, and uh, they'll be reporting uh, back on potential funding sources uh, for, uh, for assembly uh, in terms of who's sitting on this panel, there's representatives from the Provincial Transit Agency, from the CTC, from the Board of Trade, um, from the Greater Toronto Civic Action Alliance, which is a, a group that John Tory was a part of in terms of discussing public policy issues in Toronto, former mayor, David Crombie, uh, Professor Eric Miller from the UFT, uh, Dr. Gordon Chong, who's been overseeing the, uh, the report for the uh, sub subway, uh, subway, a representative from the General City Alliance, um, an organization called Social Planning Toronto, and the Shepherd East Village BIA, roughly between, uh, representing this is roughly between Markham and Greenland, uh, right uh, close to the heart of where that great separation is. Um, and so just briefly, um, we'll get to a chart that could actually summarize this much better than the text can. Uh, but what, basically what it's getting at is you're, when you're designing a new transit system, you're looking at the population density, and you're looking at the type of land use that goes with that density. So typically, LRT systems uh, around the world, you have a more likely to have a mid-rise density, a lower density. With subways, you're much more likely to have uh, a much higher density. So for example, the most recent, um, the most recent, but the most subway extension on, the most recent on the Young Line, uh, if you're driving up um, past the 401 or from Shepherd North, you'll see a lot of the high-rise development that's occurred since that extension um, in, around the North York Civic Center. Uh, that was brought um, And typically, regardless of the type of trends, you're going to be increasing your land values. With subways, you can have higher density, perhaps increase your land values more than you can um, with LRT. 